Shalom. I am so pleased to announce our upcoming 10th anniversary Passover. Being held on Wednesday, April 17th. Everyone is cordially invited to purchase tickets at $7 per seat. They will be sold on our website and can be picked up at the table in the foyer or purchased on Sundays after each service. This year's tickets will be sold by table, so your table will be reserved. Please get your tickets soon. You won't want to miss it. IP Family, the Sheep Fundraiser did so well that we're accepting more orders from March the 10th through March the 27th. If you would like to place an order, please see Pastor Donna or Miss Lily. There will be a meeting on March 17th after the second service for parents and kids that are going to attend Kids Fest. March 23rd is the Daddy Daughter Dance. The last day to purchase tickets is March 13th. You must have a ticket to attend this event. To purchase your tickets, please visit the Connect Center. Good morning, International Praise. Teen Talent Auditions will be held March the 24th at 9 a.m. in the Student and Children's Sanctuary. Also, on March the 24th at 5.30 in the Cafe Commons, 129 will host a relaunch party with games, fellowship, and food. Please come out for this exciting time. How would you like to experience love at a deeper level of intimacy? Love one another in a way that you want to be loved. Talk to your spouse in a way that they will really listen and hear you. Negotiate rather than argue. Manage your anger and work through conflicts together. Forgive, share in, and support each other's dreams. You want to feel the passion and excitement of a newlywed? Whether you are a newlywed, married for a long time, or engaged to be married. Join us and we will give you that dynamic marriage. Please pick up a flyer in the foyer and see Alfred or Regina McFarlane for more information. It's time for the Mass Choir again to worship on April the 7th. So come and join us. First rehearsal is this Thursday, March the 14th, 7 to 8 p.m. Visit the Music and Arts page on the church website or see Minister Goodwin for music details and information. Flashpoint Revival, a time of renewal, will start next Sunday, March the 17th, through Wednesday, March the 20th, with the evangelist Rick Laracy. Monday through Wednesday, will begin 7 p.m. nightly. We are in need of actors and extras for our resurrection presentation, Jesus Said It. If interested, please meet by the dance room after 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. service. Connect and get involved by volunteering in the ministry and becoming a part of a life group. Join us for Biblical Foundations on Wednesday nights and Word and Prayer on Saturdays at 8 a.m. Like, share, follow, and subscribe to our media outlets to stay connected. Now remember to love God, love others, and reach the world. Won't you get your Bibles? A lot of what you're experiencing right here tonight, I'm going to cover in what the Lord has given me to give to you tonight. John chapter 7, verse 37, verse 38, and verse 39. I know they'll have it up on the screen. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Anybody's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And we know the rest of that. On the day of Pentecost, they were with one mind and in one accord, when suddenly they heard a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
And cloven tongues of fire sat upon each of them, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Amen. I want to minister tonight on this thought. Drinking living water. What does it mean to drink living water? Now, Father, we don't have to invite you. You're already here. You're in the midst of your people. I believe that you're touching hearts, filling lives with your presence and your power. I believe, Lord, that you're going to just culminate everything that you want to accomplish in this place tonight through your word and through an altar experience where we are altered by your spirit, changed by your word, and given new life and new hopes and new dreams. Because that's the kind of God you are. You're a good, good father. You're a God who loves your people. And, Lord, you just love the tabernacle with us. You just love to commune with us, oh, God. And I thank you, Lord, that your presence is here in Jesus' name. And everybody said, turn to somebody and say, he's in this house tonight. Amen. He's in this house tonight. Hallelujah. 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 What a beautiful crowd you are on a Monday night. Sometimes they used to call it the Monday blues. There's no blue in a Monday tonight, amen? You're here in the house of the Lord. You know, it is God's desire for us to take him, to invite him into our spirits, to literally drink him as living water. That's what Jesus was saying when he said that if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Drink living water. In these verses, you get a picture of Jesus standing among a crowd of people in a feast. And he just issues this call, come to me. Come and drink. And it was was a pre-ultimate call of the coming of the comforter. We know that. He was talking to them about there's one who's come after me. He's, he's going to, to you go, he's going to comfort you. He's going to dwell in you. He's going to be with you, amen. You're going to have the comforter when I'm gone. You see, Jesus himself said, I will baptize, amen. He's the baptizer. Well, you didn't hear that. I said, he's the Holy Ghost baptizer, amen. When you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, how many of you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen? Amen. If you don't, you need it, amen. You need him. It is Jesus Christ. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is Jesus Christ himself that is present at your baptism. That's why it's heaven on earth. That's why it's like honey on your lips. That's why it's like joy unspeakable and full of glory because the one who walked out of the tomb, the one who sits on the throne, he actually comes to where you are and takes you and baptizes you in the sweet Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what he does. And that's why it's such a wonderful experience. But how do you come and drink? I I think that's a good question for us. See, only the Lord Jesus can quench our spiritual thirst. He is the living water. He is the Holy Ghost baptizer. He, in giving the living water to us, the Holy Spirit baptism, he wants us to drink him until we quench our thirst and even drink until rivers of living water begin to flow out of our innermost being into other people's lives. Amen. But quite often, and let's be honest, instead of feeling satisfied and watered and and so forth. We feel dry and we feel dead inside. And and so you understand, we may want to come and drink the living water, but we don't know how to. How do you drink living water? I I found a scripture over in Isaiah chapter 12, beginning in verse 3, and here's what it says. It says, therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day, You will say, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his deeds among the peoples. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. 
That phrase, in that day, somebody say that, in that day, occurs frequently throughout the book of Isaiah. Matter of fact, in chapter 2, it shows up in verse 11 and 17 and 20. In chapter 3, verse 7 and 18. Chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 30. Chapter 7, verse 18, 21 and 23. Verse, in chapter 10, it shows up in verse 20 and 27. And then chapter 11, it shows up in verse 10. But has a different tone in chapter 12 than all the other earlier mentions of in that day. In those chapters, in that day, predicted judgment that is to come. Okay? Every one of them talks about a judgment that is about to come. In that day, in that day, in that day. But then in chapter 12, it says something totally different. It looks forward to a time of thanksgiving. Amen. That day has not yet arrived, according to the, to the book of Isaiah. But in this chapter, it promises that it will Come in the form of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So when that day finally arrives, watch what I'm about to say. And the people experience the gift of freedom. They are to respond by what? Giving thanks to the Lord. Calling upon his name. Celebrating a special relationship that we have with God our Father. Amen. So you see, for you and I, that day arrived when Jesus became our living water. Amen. No, my, you're not hearing me yet. The completion of that day will be when we are perfected, when our corruptible takes on incorruption and our mortality takes on immortality and we receive our glorified body and we are with him eternally forevermore. Amen. But in the meantime, there's ways that you and I can continue to drink the living water that he gives us. Amen. First of all, you, give, you drink living water by giving thanks to the Lord. Amen. Oh, you're hearing me now. Now, you, we drink living water when we say, God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for filling me with your sweet Holy Ghost. Thank you for making a way where there was no way. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in my life. We start each day with thanksgiving. We end each prayer with thanksgiving. It's a healthy life when you live a life of gratitude. In my family, when I was growing up, we always had to say thank you before we received anything. Amen. Some people didn't understand that. It's a different culture in some places. Amen. I, I remember sitting at the table and having the fried chicken and the mashed potatoes and the green beans and, and the biscuits, and they're all sitting on the table, and I'm wanting to eat some of that. And, and if, But if I didn't say thank you for the mashed potatoes, I didn't get no mashed potatoes. And if I didn't say thank you for the fried chicken, I didn't get no fried chicken because my parents would remind me, what are you supposed to say? Because they wanted to instill in me a life of gratitude for everything that we have and how we were blessed amen we say thank you listen to me folks the lord has done so much for me through his death burial and resurrection and his ascension to the right hand of the father amen he cares for all of our needs he cares for all of our struggles amen and we all have so much to thank him for and he is worthy to be thanked he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be honored amen it's interesting to me that the opposite of thankfulness is unthankfulness and if you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, when it talks about the last days, perilous times will come. And then it begins to go through a litany of things and a litany of, of the kind of people that, that are going to, uh, the things that are going to be going on in our world. There will be people that were unthankful, lovers of self, lovers of money, boasters, arrogance, reviler, revilers, disobedient, unholy, without natural affection, and many more negative things. And listed there, once again, is the word unthankful. We live in an unthankful generation. We live in an unthankful world, amen. We live in a world that's more about taking than giving, amen. And that's what you have in our world today. So the more you complain, the more you show acts of ingratitude, the drier your spirit will become. The situation that you're in will not improve, and things will only get worse and worse if you're always thinking about me, 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 instead of others. Can somebody shout amen? See, praising the Lord is what brings living water into my soul. You have to learn to change the atmosphere, amen? Let me tell you something. We, we were, this, this place tonight is charged. And 
the, the atmosphere was created. The moment they, they hit the first note and sang the first word, amen, the atmosphere for worship and the atmosphere for praise was already in this place. There's something about it when you and I begin to praise the Lord. It begins to create a climate. It begins to create an atmosphere. Isaiah 61 and 3 says to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, amen. Now let me translate that for you. You take off the spirit of heaviness and you put on the garment of praise. Come on, somebody help me preach. Now, everybody wants to get rid of fear. Everybody wants to get rid of, uh, of anxiety, get rid of their worry, and get rid of their stress. But you don't understand it's not just enough to remove it. You've got to replace it with something else. You don't just take it off. You put on something in its place called the garment of praise. Amen. It's creating an atmosphere. It's creating a climate in order for God to come in and do wondrously in our midst. Amen. My, 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 my. I'm going to give you a very profound statement right here. You cannot grow bananas in Alaska. Because Alaska does not have the does not have the climate that is conducive for growing bananas. But you can go to Jamaica and you can grow all the bananas you want to grow because they have the perfect climate for growing bananas. Amen. Can I just tell you that garment of praise, uh, that garment of praise is being thankful to the Lord God Almighty. It's saying, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day. Thank you for dying on a cross for me. Thank you for resurrecting on the third day. Thank you for ascending to the right hand of the Father. Thank you for giving me another day to experience your grace and to experience your mercy. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my financial ability to pay my bills. Thank you, Lord, for my job. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Can somebody praise him in this house? Amen. And then we pray. We pray, Lord, thank you for being the light of the world. Thank you, Lord, for coming to love me and, and help me and care for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the light. Amen. And that's what he is. He's my way. He's my light. He's everything. He's life in me. Amen. And you continue thanking the Lord throughout the day. I can tell you who happy people are. People that are always saying, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I remember years ago, I got in an accident, not the one I got into recently, but years ago, I got in a, 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 really, I, didn't, I almost got in an accident, and, and uh, I, the guy was in my blind side, and I ran him off the road. I saw his station wagon just be bopping down the middle of the media, and amen, I said, man, I ran him off the road. So I pulled over, because I was concerned, are they all right? He got out, and he was cussing me a blue streak. He was calling me every name you could think of. And, 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 I, and, 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 and he was, I said, I, I said, sir, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see you. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I didn't see you. And he said, well, let me look underneath my car and make sure there's no damage. And he looked underneath. He said, it looks all pretty good. And there's nothing leaking and there's nothing broken or anything like that. I said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Just right there, I said, praise the Lord. I said, are you all right, too? Is your wife all right? Because she was in the car. He said, yeah, we're all right. I said, well, praise the Lord for that, too. I never saw anybody get in their vehicle so fast and leave. Amen. Can I just tell you, that's what praising does. Every time we utter a thanks to the Lord, we are drinking living water. We are drinking living water. We are drinking living water. Can somebody shout Amen. It's like taking a drink from a refreshing spring, and instead of being dry, we are watered and revived. Hallelujah, 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 amen. There's another way you can drink living water. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon his name. See, right after instructing us to give thanks, in verse 4 he says, call upon the Lord's name. Now, some people... Maybe that's a little odd for you. I don't know. But calling on the name of the Lord is a practice that is found throughout Scripture. It begins back in the ancient days of the Old Testament. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, when it said, At the time that Enosh was born, men began to call upon the name of Jehovah. Hello. And so the practice continued. Calling upon the name of the Lord throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. 
In Acts chapter 7, the Bible said that Stephen called upon the Lord's name as he was being stoned to death. In the New Testament, in Acts chapter 2, Peter first mentioned calling on the name of the Lord on the day of Pentecost, as was prophesied by, by the prophet Joel. And then you look at other places, the major practice it is in the New Testament to call on the name of the Lord. In, in Romans 10, he says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For Scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Going back to Stephen for just a moment. I mean, they stoned him as he was calling on the name of the Lord, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He suffered tremendous persecution. But this practice of calling on the Lord must have impressed Saul as referenced in the 7th chapter and then again in the 22nd chapter of Acts. Even in 2 Peter 2.22, when Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, flee you full lust. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. The Greek word there, call on, takes a word on and call, which means by name. And, it's such, and, 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 and so what it really means is to call out audibly, even loudly unto the name of the Lord. Now, here's what we do. Today, what we, we should do or ought to do, we can call on the Lord's name throughout the day. How many have done something like this? Oh, Lord Jesus, I need you. Hello. Lord Jesus, show up right here, right now. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Lord Jesus, I just want to let you know I love you. I, I worship you. You are my God. I just want to praise you. I just want to magnify you. And I just want to call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And what you don't understand is when you do that, you're drinking <laughs> Living water. My, my, my. My, my. You're just drinking in a big gulp. Before 7 and 11 ever came up with it, we already had it in the scriptures. Drink that big gulp of living water. Amen. Hallelujah. It also says another way that we can, call, that we can uh, uh, drink living water. By making his deeds known among the people. Hey, listen. He's done so much for me. <laughs> oh, I'm about ready to shout now. When I think about what he's done for me, when I think about where he brought me from, oh, my, my, my. I mean, he came to earth and he lived the perfect life. He died for the sin of all mankind. He resurrected, he ascended. He gave us the Holy Spirit for a comforter, amen, to dwell in us, to be with us, to revive us, to renew us. He produced a church as his body through his death and resurrection. It's still his plan for the church to be the conduit that he works through on this earth, amen. And when I think about that, how wonderful he is. There's a word that comes to my mind, testify. Testify, amen. When I grew up in the church, we used to have testimony services. When I became a pastor, I realized why pastors had testimony services. They weren't prepared to teach anything. Amen. So they just came in and said, we're just going to have a testimony service tonight. Amen. Oh, come on. Help me out a little bit. Amen. But I miss those testimony services. Amen. I, I, now, I, I must confess to you, I don't miss hearing somebody say, well, the devil's been on my back all day long, amen. But what I love to hear is when somebody says, I've got to give my God some glory. I've got to give my God some praise. He's done so much for me. He brought me up out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. He's put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto my God, and many shall hear it and fear and trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Testify. 
My, 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 my. We are overcomers. Hallelujah. And living water flows. So, turn to your neighbor and say, so good he is. He's marvelous. He's wonderful. Hallelujah. Don't be silent. Oh, you're not hearing me yet. I said, don't be silent. Tell somebody what the Lord has done in your life. Amen. That's called testifying. My, 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 my. We got a world today that don't want to hear anything about Jesus. And yet Jesus is the only one who lives. Jesus is on the throne. Amen. He's in control. Hallelujah. I'm going to testify. And what you do is you speak life to the world. Amen. I got on a plane the other day. Actually, it was the end of December to fly from Baltimore, an early morning flight to Charlotte. When I got on the plane, it's about 6 o'clock. There were three people in the seat behind me, a couple of black ladies and a black man, and I heard them singing. I said, I know what they're singing. I remember that song. They were singing, there's power, power in the blood of Jesus. And I kind of leaned back in my seat and between the crack and said, you keep that up. We're going to shout on this plane this morning. And by that time, they just got a little glory shout. You know, oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then I went to sleep for the next hour and 15 minutes because I needed to get some sleep. I was about to get off the plane. The man reached up and grabbed my shoulder and said, what's your name? I said, Rick Larry. He said, I perceive you're a minister of the gospel. I said, yeah. He said, the Lord's given me a word for you. So he begins to prophesy over me right there on the airplane. <laughs> I had one eye closed and one eye looking. Oh, I'm just going to be honest with you. I was looking around. I wanted to see the reaction of the people. He wasn't quiet about it. He wasn't shy about it. I mean, he was laying the word of the Lord over me and on me right there on that airplane. And I saw some people going, trying to get off as quick as they could. And then I saw some kind of leaning in, trying to figure out what's going on. Can I just tell you, there's something about it when you begin to testify. There's something about it when you begin to give God praise and glory. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Testifying is an effective way to drink living water. That's why the enemy wants you to keep your mouth shut. I mean, you can name any other name you want to name, but just don't mention the name of Jesus. Amen. It seems like anymore. Amen. Just don't mention the name of Jesus because you're going to get sued or somebody's not going to be happy. You might get fired. You might get disciplined. But I'm here to declare to you, my God is bigger. My God is greater. My God is able to take care of his people as you're drinking living water. Well, let me put it to you like this. Maybe the reason you feel dry sometimes is you haven't told anybody lately about Jesus. Because when we open our mouth and share our faith, hallelujah, we open ourselves up to the presence of God and we are opening ourselves up to drinking more living water. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Number four, he says, Name, his name is exalted. So remind people. Oh, yeah. I'm going to preach a little bit more around that. The Philippians said it like this. Therefore, God has, has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every, to those on heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Christ is above every name. There's, well, we sing it. There's something about that name. There's no sweeter name than the name of Jesus. And this is something we can speak to those around us. Maybe you ought to take it on just a challenge.
Do you know that the name of Jesus is exalted above all names? People will get a little fidgety. People get a little nervous. But yet it might touch a chord in somebody's heart. Ask people that. Jesus is. And his name is the highest name on heaven and earth. The reason I got on that plane at the end of December, I was going to a funeral in Greenville, a memorial service. My first cousin's husband had passed away. She had passed away a couple of years earlier. She had battled not for nine years stage four cancer. She was a gracious woman, a beautiful woman. And her life was a Proverbs 31 type woman. And though she had stage four cancer for nine years, she never suffered pain, never had any pain medication. And in her dying day, she attributed that to God's help for her and healing. So it left Ken, her husband. Now, Ken, he wasn't like the rest of us. Amen. You know, I'm from the South. I'm a son of the South. My, 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 most of my family hail from South Georgia. Every Labor Day weekend, we have 100 to 150 of us that gather for a family reunion. It turns into a camp meeting, prayer service, sing-a-thon, and it's all about God. We don't have anybody drinking. We don't have anybody smoking. We don't have anybody doing drugs. We're all there just worshiping God together. Amen. And you know, we're just all there just enjoying the presence of the Lord. And so we welcome new people into our family. I remember 33 years ago when Ken came into the family, he stood up and said, my name is Ken Gromist with a Jersey accent. Hello. And I know I'm a Yankee, but I'm married to Donna Faye now. And whether you like it or not, you're going to have to accept me into this family. Most of us are looking around saying, who let the dogs out? Amen. <laughs> you know, and we just had to learn to get used to it. When I was at his memorial service, I was convicted. I was convicted. Because there's things I didn't know about Ken. Ken was the kind of person he never met a stranger. If he was in a restaurant and he saw a couple eat over here eating, he'd walk up to him and say, Hi, my name is Ken Gromist. Have you met my best friend? And they'd look around trying to see who's around. There was nobody. Jesus is my best friend. Can I introduce you to my Jesus? At his memorial service, there was opportunity for people of the 7,500 that had gathered to stand up and give their reflection. There were about a dozen, no less than a dozen, that stood up, and each one would tell the story how that Ken literally ran them down. One guy, he followed him until he pulled into a parking lot. Then he pulled up next to him. And before he could get in the store that he was about to walk in, Ken was saying, can I talk to you for a moment? And the testimony would go, all he wanted to ask me is, did I know his Jesus? But I'm saved today because of what he did. Hello, oh, Amen. I just want to tell somebody here, we need to tell other people that his name is exalted above every other name. And when you do, you're drinking living water. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why we testify we're made overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, amen. Testify. Don't be silent. Testify. There's another way you can drink living water. You can sing songs to the Lord. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. That's a wooden way to drink, isn't it? I was at a church recently in Mobile, Alabama, a quite large church, a church that runs about 1,400 people. And I was sitting on the front row. The pastor came in. And he leaned into me and he said, Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I can't sing. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. I don't know how to keep the tempo, but I don't care. So I'm letting you know right now, it's not going to sound good. And if it bothers you and you need to go somewhere else, I understand. But I'm going to sing because I, I came to sing to the Lord. Amen. And sure enough, he opened up his mouth 
and he can't sing, amen. But what I loved about it is he didn't care. I said he didn't care because he wasn't singing for your pleasure. He was singing for the Lord's pleasure, amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Opening your mouth, singing songs, hymns, whatever they might be, amen, to the Lord is one of the best ways to drink living water. So if you sing in your shower, sing in your shower. If you sing while you're driving, sing while you're driving. If you sing in the, in the church, sing while you're in the church, amen. But sing, sing, sing unto the Lord a new song, hallelujah. My, 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 my. I love to sing. The psalmist said, sing to the Lord a new song. Psalms 90 said, sing praises to the Lord. Psalms 81, sing for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Psalms 95, oh, sing for the joy to the Lord. 98, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Isaiah 44, he said, shout for joy, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout joyfully, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into a shout of joy, you mountains, O forest, and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Israel, and in Israel he shows, he shows forth his glory. Then in the New Testament, listen to what it says. Speaking to one another in Ephesians 5. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things. Always giving thanks for all things. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. Amen. James 5 and 13 says, Any sick among you, anyone suffering, then they must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Acts 16, the story of Paul and Silas at midnight. They begin to sing hymns. They begin to sing praises to the Lord, amen. And when they begin to sing these praises, the chains broke off. Hey, the jail cell swung open. They walked out free because they began to sing unto the Lord. And that's what we should do. We should sing songs to the Lord as we start each day, as we go through the day, as we close out the night. Sing songs to the Lord. And when you do, you're drinking living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're drinking living water. The more we sing with our hearts throughout the day unto the Lord, the more watered you're going to be and more refreshed you'll be. Amen. Then finally, cry out and give a ringing shout. My, my, my. Crying out and giving a ringing shout. Hear that. I mean, have you ever done that? Psychotherapist will tell you there's a therapy called primal scream therapy that they use to treat anxiety, trauma, and even stress. And what they encourage you to do is maybe go into one of their padded rooms that is soundproof, amen, and just let it all hang out, amen. Or find somewhere out in the country where there's nobody else and just scream till your heart's content, amen, as a way of dealing with anxiety, pressure, amen, stress. I mean, have you ever done that? I've always felt better when I screamed at my kids. <laughs> and now I know why, amen. Come on, somebody help me, okay. Oh, yeah, sometimes we pray quietly to the Lord. But have you ever just cried out and just gave a ringing shout unto the Lord? If you have it, you ought to try it sometime. It's very therapeutic. It will bless your soul. It will release some things out of you that you didn't even know you had. Amen? I'll tell you that right now. That's why Psalm, Psalm 47 and 1 says, Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Shout. Shout. Now, I did a word study years ago on shout. And I'm just going to give you the short of it, okay, because I don't have time to go through all of it. Basically, it's a discombobulating noise. Hello. Hello. And scripturally, for the purpose of shaking up your enemy. Oh, my, 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 my. Remember what Jehoshaphat did? 
Instead of putting the army out front in the battle against the enemy, he put the choir out front. And he said, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to run down this hill and I want you to make all the noise you can and I want you to shout out loud as loud as you can. And when they did, their enemies scattered before them and turned on each other and God gave them the victory, amen. Oh my, 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 my. Listen to me. Life is full of so many thoughts and anxieties that just tend to hinder prayer. In those moments, we ought to shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. See, the problem is more with us. Can I say that again? It's more us. Listen, we, to get through our mental activity, sometimes we have to shout it out loud. We cry desperately. We experience breakthrough in the desert of our mind by crying out and even giving a ringing shout. Sometimes it's a desperate cry. Lord, I need you right now. Hallelujah. I need you. I'm dry. I'm dead. I, I feel so empty. I need you, Lord. Let me tell you something. I've been doing this. We were talking about it today. This is the 24th year of evangelism for me. The 18th in my continued run right now. I'm, I'm in churches of all different kinds and all different sizes. I've, been to, I've preached to two people in one place. Hello? And I've preached to 2,000 in another place. In the last three years, I've done that. And, and, and it doesn't matter. One of the things I've found out is this. When people come to this altar, I don't know what gets in the mind of people. Hello? I really don't. You stand there sometimes with your lips zipped shut. It's as if you're waiting on God himself to come down, pry open your mouth, and pull something out of you that you're unwilling to give. And I've seen people do that, and they're desperate, they're needy, they're hungry, but they just won't open their mouths to express some kind of primal praise to God to get his attention and turn things around. Amen. On the other end, I've seen people come, and the moment they open their mouth, and the moment they begin to offer praise to God, that all of a sudden, hallelujah comes down. God begins to do a miracle. They begin to get liberated and set free, and they walk out changed by the power of God. Now, I know somebody's going to say, well, that's just not my personality. Some of you just need to get beyond your personality, Amen. You need to crucify your personality to the cross somehow in humility, amen, and say, you know what? If that's what it takes for me to get free, I'm going to get free tonight, and I'm not going home the way I came here in Jesus' name, amen. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And when you do that, God's moving in your life. I'm going to do this quick. There's eight Hebrew words in Scripture for praise. Most of them, the majority of them, infer, demand, or is expressed in a shout. Halah is the most common word for praise. It's a word that simply means to boast, to brag, to rave about God, even to the point of appearing foolish. Listen, I... I go to football games. I go to a couple of Carolina games every year. And uh, when I'm at that ball game, and everybody's screaming, and their offense is threatening, our defense, 80,000 people are standing, and they're all going, ah! <laughs> Hello, amen. Don't sound like nothing. Don't appear to be nothing, but they are shouting. Oh, yeah. And we call people like that fans. Hello, amen. They're called fans, right? Now, unfortunately, most of us, if we shout and scream and brag on God like they do at a ball game trying to stop an offense from scoring a touchdown, we're labeled fanatics. 
Amen. And I don't know about you, but I don't mind being a fanatic for my Lord. I said, I don't mind being a fanatic for my Lord. Hallelujah. If I can scream at a football game, I ought to be able to scream my praise to God in such a discombobulating way it causes my enemy to flee before me. Another word, yada, it means to worship with extended hands. Amen. So you lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Amen. He says, extend it. I mean, some people, they, they don't even want to lift their hands. But it's another way of praising God. Another one is Barak. It denotes a blessing. It's, it's used in the word when, when Job said these words. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will depart. The Lord gives. The Lord takes away. May the name of the Lord be praised. It means Barak. Another word is Tehillah. It simply means to sing, to laud, to acclaim, glorify, applaud, great praise, speak well of, pay tribute to, amen. There's nothing quiet about that. Then, then there's another one, Zamar. It means to pluck the strings of an instrument. It speaks about rejoicing. It involves a joyful expression of music. My, my, my. I don't know about you, but I love that. Then there's another one, Toda which means to shout or to address with a loud voice. Somebody says, you're loud, aren't you? I say, yeah. But Toda goes even further. It includes an attitude of gratitude of God's promised deliverance, even while we are still in need. It is a type of praise that refers to lifting of the hands and inviting God's help. The next one is Shabbat. It means to shout, to address in a loud tone. And then the last one you're familiar with, hallelujah. My, my, my. Hallelujah is the premier word for praise in the Bible. It transcends the languages of the world. What that simply means, it, it, it cannot, it is not translated, it is transliterated. So, halal means to boast, to brag on, to make a show, to even to the point of looking ridiculous, ridiculous as if something's wrong with us. Oh, you ain't been to church with me, honey. You ain't been in some of the places I've been. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I won't go there. When we cry out to God like this, we are delivered from the thoughts in our minds that tend to hinder us, to distract us. And we are taking a deep drink, a deep gulp of life-giving water, amen, by just simply saying, Hallelujah! 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 My, 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 my. So what do we do? We come to the well and drink. The woman that came to the well, the Sumerian woman that came to the well, Jesus was leaning up against it. You remember, he looked up to her and said, give me a drink. Give me a drink. The woman noticed he didn't have anything to draw water from. She quickly told him, you don't have anything. And why are you asking me? I'm going to paraphrase it for you. Why are you asking me? The reason I'm coming here at this time is because other women don't want to be around me. Other women don't want to be associated with me. I, I've got a lot of problems in my life. And then Jesus turns it around and says, well, if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you would ask me for a drink, and I would give you living water that you would never thirst again. <laughs> she said, well, I perceive you're a prophet. He says, yeah, you have five husbands. 
The one you're living with is not even your husband. You're living in a shack up. You're messed up in your life. But I've got water that will change everything and will give you life-giving water. It will flow in you, through you, and out of you. You're never going to be the same. And now you're going to be changed forevermore. Amen. Now, what you need to notice there is this. He moved her from the facts to truth. She knew the facts. She understood the facts. She was cognizant of the consequences of the facts. That's why she showed up at the hour that she showed up. All she had in her life were the facts. But now Jesus comes along and says, I don't care about your facts. I don't care what you've been. I don't care where you've been. I don't care who you did it with. I don't care how many people you did it with. All I want you to know is I've got some truth I'm going to lay on you that your life is never going to be the same because I'm going to give you living water. And then she commences to go running through the town. Oh, come see a man. Come see a man. Oh, come see a man. I've got to testify about what this man has done for me. He's not like any other man. He's a man who gives living water. Drink living water. Drink living water. Drink it. Drink it. Oh, stand to your feet. You got to go ahead and stand up, amen. First of all, put your hands together and give the Lord a praise. Shout, 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 shout. I said shout, shout praise. Shout praise. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Maradabakataya. Oh, I'm telling you right now, God is in this house. If you want it, he's got it. You need a healing, he's got a healing for you. You need a breakthrough, he's got a breakthrough for you. You need a deliverance, he's got a deliverance for you. You need salvation, he's got salvation for you. If you're tired of listening to the facts of your life and you want to know the truth, the truth that will set you free, he's here tonight to show you his truth and to give you water where you will never thirst again in your life. He's able to wash it all away. Hallelujah. 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 My, 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 my. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Shanalama kataya na bohoya. Ma, 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 ma. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is exalted. Your name is praised. Your name is honored. Your name, hallelujah, is above every other name. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. I said the comforter has come. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Why don't you find yourself a place up in this altar and lift up holy hands unto him and let him fill you with his Holy Ghost tonight, amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody needs some living water tonight. Some of you, somebody needs to move from the facts to the truth. I know what the enemy said. I know what the enemy's declared. But that's not the truth. Amen. It's a lie. Oh, it might be factual in a sense, but it's a lie because that's not who God sees you as. That's not who God looks at you as. God has something for you, amen. So I just feel so strongly right now. Can't get this out of my mind. There's some people in this room here that you've been bogged down in the facts of your life. The enemy has browbeat you. The enemy has held it over your head. The enemy has caused you to feel depressed and discouraged. But I'm here to tell you, God is in this house. That he wants to move you from those facts to his truth. His truth will set you free. His truth will make you whole and complete. And you'll never be the same. I said never be the same. Never be the same because he came. Hallelujah. So whoever I'm talking to right now, move to the closest aisle and come quickly. Come quickly. You need to move from facts to truth. You need to move from facts to truth. Come on. Come on. Come on, they're still coming. Come on. Keep coming. You're tired of the facts as the enemy has given them to you. And you're ready to move to truth. I want you to come right now. I want you to come. Hallelujah. The answer is to drink in some living water so you'll never thirst again. So you'll never be dry again. My Lord, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. I, I'm going to talk to somebody else right here, right now. There are people in this room that are not in this altar yet. That you've been in a hellacious battle. And it looks like the enemy has thrown everything he can at you. And you feel hopeless. You're struggling to even smile or even feel good. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your battle is. But I know one thing, you can get, free, you can get liberty right here in this place tonight, amen. And you can walk out of here changed by the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shut that up, I'll tell you. If that's you I'm talking to right now, and you're going through a hellacious battle, it's been a long battle for somebody. It's been a strong battle for somebody. I want you to come and join these that are already in this altar. Come on, quickly. Come on, anybody coming? Come on, you're going through a battle. The battle is not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. I said the battle is the Lord's. As soon as you get that in your mind tonight, that the battle is the Lord's, you're going to, be, you're going to have victory in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Now here's, I know the people are getting positioned to help me pray. And I appreciate it. Those of you that came for prayer, look at me. First thing I want you to do is just lift up your hands. 
You say, God, I'm sorry. I repent for listening to the facts and not adhering to the truth. So tonight, I'm moving from the facts of my life to your truth for my life. Your truth says I'm free. Your truth says I've got victory. Your truth says I'm healed. Your truth says I will overcome and be victorious, amen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now with your hands raised, I want everybody across this building to do this at the same time. With your hands raised, I want you to give out your loudest praise. I want you to begin to shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout, 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 shout.
Oh, somebody shout again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Drink that living water. Drink that living water. L listen. I wish woman. I want you to get into some family units here tonight. If you have your family here, get in some family units. If you're not here with your family tonight and you're by yourself, join a family. Become a son or become a daughter. Try to get the inheritance. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord spoke to my heart a while ago. And he said that there's some families in this house tonight that you have been under an onslaught in an attack of the enemy and so the Lord told me to have you to get with your family units and take their hand and here's what I believe is going to happen here in the next few moments I believe that when we lift our hands together, and that's what we're going to do, and when we give out a shout of praise, and I want you to hold it there, I want you to keep giving that shout of praise, that there's going to be some victories won in this place tonight. There's a scripture that comes to my mind. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I like it the other way around. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will hold up a standard against him. And that standard is simply enough is enough. Enough is enough. Some of you need to declare enough is enough. So on the count of three, I want you to lift those hands toward heaven. And I want you to give out a shout of praise. Hallelujah. One, are you ready? Two, are you ready? Three, hallelujah. are broken hallelujah I said chains are broken hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> your enemy is scattered before you you have the victory oh shout praise hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep on praising him, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, now listen to me. 
Somebody needs to testify. You need to turn to somebody around you and just testify what the Lord has just done for you. The Lord has just set me free. The Lord has just won the victory. The Lord has given me the victory. The Lord has healed me. The Lord has healed me. Testify. Testify to somebody. The Lord saved me. The Lord filled me with his Holy Ghost. The Lord's given me a new job. My, 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 my. Somebody just needs to dance. Hallelujah! 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 Shukataya nana vasataya. Hallelujah! 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 Blessed be the name. 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 Hallelujah! 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 Now, I know somebody, you think we're crazy. And we are. We're really fanatical. Amen. If I can lose my voice at a football game, I can lose my voice here. Amen. And this is more powerful. See, sometimes we don't really understand what our praise does. Sometimes you've got to have a visual, an image. A few years ago, I was traveling, and I was, you know, kind of upset about a couple of things going on in our world and society, and I was listening to some talking heads on radio, and I was getting madder, more upset, until I just turned it off. And I started talking to the Lord. And I, I, I began to say, God, why do you let these people get by with what they're getting by with? Amen. I also said, Lord, why can't we just kill the ones that are in our way? <laughs> Bury them where there be no body of evidence found. And just move on. The Lord spoke back. He said, quit complaining. And praise me. I said, but Lord, I don't understand why the wicked are prospering. I don't understand why you let certain people get by with certain things. Lord, do something. He says, quit complaining and praise me. I said, but Lord, I praised you. I've worshipped you. He said, but you don't do it as a weapon. He says, you need to use your praise as a weapon against your enemy. I believe that. And then he gave me a visual. And here's what the visual was. When you praise me, it's like taking a rope and lassoing an ankle of a demon and pulling him out of the heavens. And when you do that, he said, you are clearing a path for me to bless you. Well, my praise went to another level. Because all of a sudden, I saw demons flying out of the heavens. Oh, yeah. So do you understand tonight how important it is to express our praise? Not only are you drinking living water and your soul is refreshed, but you're also attacking the enemy and discombobulating him and causing him to scatter before you. My brother-in-law the other day, before he retired from the United States Postal Service, he was having some problems. And it didn't seem like it was going to quit. 
until one day he said, I'm going to work early today and I'm going to march around that post office. I'm going to do it seven times and I'm going to stop and I'm going to put my hands together and I'm going to give a shout of praise. And when he did, within a week, the problem was resolved. I believe this, folks. It's warfare. So we're drinking living water, but you're also fighting a battle against the enemy. Still, across this front, as much praise as we've had in this place, there were people that it's hard for them to, to pull out that praise, to pull out that shout. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, I know I was, I was the Lord gave me the best set of lungs vocal cords that heaven had when he gave me mine and I matter of fact my wife sometimes she'll look and say why are you yelling I said honey I'm not yelling you won't yelling I can give you yelling amen she said but you're so loud I said I can't help what God blessed me with it is what it is my sons told me one day, said, Dad, you don't even know how to whisper. <laughs> if you don't want it known, don't tell me to say it, amen, because everybody will know it. I'm just telling you the truth. But I believe in this place right here, right now, there's some people that you've gone to a different level. You've got a tool in your tool chest that you didn't know you had. Did you understand what I'm saying? And you don't have to live thirsty. <laughs> I said, you don't have to live thirsty. Call upon the name of the Lord. Shout unto him with a voice of triumph. Give a praise, hallelujah, out of your lips. Sing a new song to him, amen. Whatever it takes. My, 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 my. Lord of Asanda of Akatayana of Ahoya. My, my, my. My, my. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Is anybody here thirsty still? If you're still thirsty, come on, amen. If you're still thirsty, you know what to do. Drink living water. I said drink living water. Testify. Matter of fact, I challenge you here tonight. Testify. Testify. When I was, when I was at that memorial service, it was at Praise Cathedral at the chapel, and I heard all these testimonies of what Ken Gromus, to the witness of his life as a minister, I felt like crawling up under the chair because of all the opportunities I've let go by where I could have just said something, where I could have just testified. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, you've got a testimony. And you ought to express it. If you knew what the Lord had done for me. Listen, I don't understand the way God works sometimes. I'm going to give it to the pastor here in a minute. But I have an aunt that passed away about three years ago. She was a drunkard. Up until the time she went into the hospital with congestive heart failure. She had, all she had done is drink and drink and smoke and smoke. And her body, that congestive heart failure just set in. Her sister went and sat by her bedside the last six weeks of her life. And about three weeks before she passed away, my Aunt Dolores gave her heart to the Lord. 
She was backslidden. And the thought just came to me that she didn't realize it, but she'd been testifying a lot in her life. This is going to get you right here. Her next door neighbor was 84 years old, an avowed atheist her whole life. Had never been to church, didn't believe that there was a God. But they would sit on their front porch, smoke cigarettes, drink their alcohol, and the whole time my Aunt Dolores was telling her, there is a God, the Lord is real. If you'll confess your sins, he'll forgive. She, now, she wasn't living it. She wasn't even saved. She wouldn't even tell you she was saved until three weeks before she died. At her funeral, this atheist woman comes into her casket and begins to cry, uncontrollably crying. The pastor stepped up to her and said, can I help you? She said, this is my friend. All the years, 30 years, we lived next door to each other. She always told me there was a God. And I always told her there was no God. But something just happened to me right now. And I believe for the first time there is a God. And I want to get saved. And she gave her heart to the Lord. All I know is this. Anytime the name of the Lord is exalted, anytime the name of the Lord is exalted, amen, and we testify, lives will be changed by the power of the word in the name of Jesus and by the blood. Can somebody shout amen? Thank you, Pastor. Oh, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. My, what a word, amen. This is one of those CDs I think you need to go buy. And I'm not just saying this to support him, but you need to buy this CD. And you need to uh, listen to this over and over again. Matter of fact, Rick, if you don't mind, just forward me your notes on that one, if you don't mind. Amen. Excellent, excellent word. Amen. As I was sitting there and he was preaching, tonight as I went to the Richland Two Charter School, there's a routine that we go through. Every time we start, and keep in mind this is in the, in the school system, and we go in, and the first thing they do, they have a moment of silence. No prayer, nothing audible, just a moment of silence. I made up in my mind, next month when I go to that, 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 that meeting, I'm going to raise my hand, and I'm going to say, listen, why do we have to be quiet? I'm going to challenge them. I'm a, and listen, because I know, I know that everybody at that table probably are believers. And I'm going to ask them, I'm going to say, who said we can't pray in school? Can, can you show me in black and white where it says we have to have a moment of silence? Then we turn around, and this is what we do. We go, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I can say that audibly. One nation under God, indivisible. So why can't I pray in the name of Jesus? Because, listen, if Rich and Two Charter School needs anything, it needs Jesus. Amen? And so I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask God, give, give me boldness. And I pray they'll receive it. They don't like it. They want to kick me off the board. I got a lot of better other things I can be doing. Amen. So, so, so pray for me if you don't mind. Amen. Why don't you just one more time put your hands together. Pretend the enemy's head's right between your hands. Slap him upside the head a couple of times. Amen. <laughs> That's right, Brother Tyrus. Pretend. Make his head hurt a little bit. Make his head hurt a little bit. Amen. One more thing, if you don't mind. In my office, I have a Samsung. It's not a, obviously not an iPad, whatever you want to call it. 
it's probably a little bit smaller than this, but if someone, it's, it looks brand new. If someone's missing a Samsung pad and you can unlock the code, I'll give it to you because that means it's yours. All right? So if you, listen, if, you, if you're missing one, see me. I've got it in my office. All right? Invite someone tomorrow. Yesterday was good, but it got better tonight. <laughs> I'm telling you, it got better tonight. I felt like something was about to shift in the spirit realm even greater than what we even imagined. And so let's believe tomorrow night the same thing. Amen. Be praying for the revival. Be praying for the evangelist. Ask God to give him strength. As you can see, he probably loses several thousand calories when he's up here preaching. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for what's happened here tonight. We do give you praise. And, Father, we know sometimes we can get so focused upon the, all the, the negative stuff that's going on in our lives that we won't take time to look at all the, the positive. It's that, it's that one thing, that negative thing that sometimes we'll get focused upon. And so, Father, I, I pray, God, when we leave here tonight, let us be reminded to give you thanks and praise and to testify and to tell people about you. Tell them about what you've done in our lives tonight. God, I'm believing tonight that there's been some things that's been broken off of people's lives because of their praise. I'm believing you tonight that, God, that there's people because of their praise, that, God, they're, they're, they're right now positioned, if you will, to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. They may not have experienced it right here, but God, maybe on their way home, all of a sudden this, this word will echo in their spirit, and all of a sudden, God, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit will come upon them. As John 7 and 38 says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Father, let it be so. Let us wake up speaking in tongues. Let us go to sleep praising you. Let us wake up praising you. And so, Lord, we give it all to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Come back. We'll see you tomorrow night. The Lord will and the rapture doesn't take place. If it does, we'll see you on the other side. To stay connected with everything we're doing, please follow us on our social media accounts. Like, subscribe, and follow us at Facebook is at International Praise. Our YouTube channel is at International Praise Live, and our Instagram is International Praise or at IPCLG.